TM. Hi everyone, uh, and welcome to a long play game. Uh, we're playing the time limit, I think it's 10 plus 10. Uh, and um, I'm playing here against a player, only, I say only, but only 1466 on lead chess. Uh, and the idea of these videos is obviously to talk about my thought process, it doesn't really matter who I play. Uh, and hopefully you guys can gain some expertise by the way a grandmaster thinks and, and how you should be thinking. I'm facing e4 with the black pieces. I'm going to play the black line. I've got a chessboard course on this. Obviously, if you want to learn more about the opening, buy the course. And stage one of the black line is to bring the knights into the center and then push with the move e5. So trying trying to get a bit of a, uh, a bit of a hold in the center, but a very strong uh, sort of bridge with that pawn there, and this gives us like you know uh, a solid foundation. Actually, it's very hard for White to break through uh, this pawn. It's like our little Spartan warrior. Now, Mander has closed the position down straight away, and this is something I don't actually treat that seriously in my in my chessboard course because it relieves a lot of the tension and black should be okay but uh, how do we play against this and my first thought uh, in this position is to first of all castle but then at some point try to attack that little point there with a move like c6 but let's develop our pieces first so i'm gonna get ready to uh, castle here uh, my opponent plays a move which is not going to be a good move. I really don't mind if he gives his bishop up for my knight. I know it's closed position, but it seems very strange to develop a piece to give it up. So I'm just going to castle, stick into the principles of the opening, and we'll see what he's going to do. This bishop, as it's moved into my half of the position, can be exposed. And my opponent does another similar thing over here. Uh, and this can often lead to problems with a little tactic like knight takes d5. For example, bishop takes, knight takes, I win a pawn. But after knight takes d5, he does have knight takes d5. Bishop takes here, knight takes, queen takes. Then c7 is on pre. Knight takes c7. I can grab a pawn there. And I quite like that because his rook has to move and I take here. So this is a standard actual tactic in, in these kind of positions. Well worth remembering that. If your opponent moves a bishop, where you have this configuration of these two pieces. You can often grab a pawn and then come back and we've won a pawn. Obviously very nice to, to, to win a pawn at this, uh, this point of the game. And I've won a very important central pawn and we've got to now just think about how to convert this. So the standard way uh, to do this is to keep playing good moves, get my pieces to the best squares, and then try to use that extra pawn. At the moment, my pieces look a little bit blocked in. So I want to move this knight so the bishop can move. Where do I want to move this knight? I quite like bringing it here so I control this central square, a little bit of pressure against that pawn. And at some point, I might want to come forwards. Now, the way my opponent is playing, this is very typical for someone at this rating range. They play semi Look at aggressive looking moves which are not very good because they don't actually do anything for example here what is my opponent's idea I've got this one covered so he doesn't really have any threat behind this it's artificial attacking and this is something to really avoid doing because okay I'll give it a kick is my opponent really going to take here well then I get a bishop and a knight for a rook and a pawn which is a good deal uh, that is nearly always favours the, the side who, who who does this so yeah simply take here and again that's another little exchange that has helped me um, let's think what my opponent might want to do he, he might want to go here so I'm just gonna take a grip of that square and I'm gonna now try to just keep playing moves that improve my pieces so that knight might come here my bishop I like tucked here because again I want to sort of hold the center and when I've got these two moves in, I can even then try to uh, use the center of the board by maybe playing like this. But first of all, let, let's continue in that, that way. Now, do I move my bishop first in case his knight comes in? Let's move the bishop first. 
And another thing now that he's played a move like this, don't play pawn moves in front of your king because it, 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 can, uh, it can make your king a little bit weak. And, and it can give me a target, a hook to attack on. So now I'm looking at that pawn and I'm thinking, okay, well, I didn't have a, a point to attack previously, but now I've got two ways to try and come into his position. One way is to play g4 and I want to open up his king. Another way is to try to sacrifice here. My opponent plays another move which doesn't really make much sense. Was I really threatening the bishop to come there? I don't think so. So I'm just going to move my queen with the idea of a potential sacrifice over here. Okay, so my opponent now comes up with a more sensible idea. His knight might want to come in here, but I've got that square covered. Where is that knight going to? Whenever your opponent moves a piece, think what is their plan? And the only thing I can see is really it coming around this way. Oh, maybe it's going to come this way. But I think I can cover that and continue slowly pushing. And I can actually use my king here because I'm very well uh, um, very well covered. He doesn't have any open lines. And I'm just going to guard that pawn. And my main idea is to push that knight back to a bad square. So I'm just really restricting his pieces as much as I can. I could have grabbed this pawn earlier. Uh, I... If I'd have seen that, I'd have played it. But even grandmasters <laughs> get stuck in their ways. And I was really concentrating his manoeuvre and just playing against that, which is also fine, because if I stop all my opponent's active play, he's going to probably implode on himself. That sounds a bit wrong. <laughs> Never good to implode on yourself. Wise words there, kids. Don't implode on yourself. That's what the Kleenex is for. Okay, let's let's push that one away. So I, I am restricting that knight. Now maybe his knight should be heading for this square, but I can also just put my pawn there. And pawns are great at restricting knights. So you, you can often use your pawns to restrict your opponent's knights. Now I don't see anything better than a knight come back. And again, I could grab this pawn. Um, if he comes back but you know what I'm, not, I'm I'm even more tempted just to avoid that funnily enough um I mean okay he's gonna come here do I want to go for this plan I mean maybe I should grab this pawn it is a pawn after all okay let's let's play let's play let's play the critical move let's grab that one why not because if he pins by knight I have bishop here I've, I, I think he should be trying some outrageous sacrifice like f4 here this is the kind of move that he should play when he can sacrifice a knight here but he gets a little bit of play with his rook and queen i don't believe it's enough so of course i had this one covered i break the pin and i also now threaten potentially a knight jump okay good move for my opponent and i have to take on passel otherwise i'm losing a piece and um maybe he wasn't aware of the on pass on move controversial that uh, and now he wants to play g4 so it's time to move my knight now where do I move it this one is well defended do we move it towards my king or do we move it somewhere like here I think I want to keep pieces around my king but maybe he's going to get some pressure like that so um, okay I've got rook f8 I've got so many pieces around my king that I shouldn't be in too much danger here um, for example, I'm going to bring my rook to cover these things. I've got a knight, queen. Everything seems to be pretty well defended here. Um, given a chance, I might even grab that pawn there, which I won't be able to do if he moves his queen to f3, because obviously the pressure uh, against that one. Uh, so maybe he should be playing this move, which he does. And, and just in case any accidents occur, g4 is his one idea. I want to move my bishop without losing my knight. So let's just bring this one over. Again, just making sure I cover everything. And now my bishop can move. Let's move it into an open diagonal around his king. So that seems like a, a, a perfect um, diagonal. And um, he's finally making this a bit more difficult than I, sh I should do, because now his knight has some way in, but uh, it's, it's you know, maybe I could have played this better. What am I gonna do next then? Well, I'm thinking now my queen might wanna try to come in. So I'm coming on these open lines. I'd like to move this knight into here. So that would mean I move my king and my knight comes here because that would block everything. And my, you know, you've got to look for open holes in your opponent's position. 
but it's not so easy now because his queen is is doing here so i actually really like the idea of going queen here because my king could be a little weak and because i've got a material advantage swapping queens off takes out all the risk in the position and that's that's a good idea let's let's take out any risk um, with the slightly well his king is exposed as well but, but i want to keep it as simple as i can i like attacking on chess but if i gain an advantage i don't want to i don't want to overly complicate matters it, it it seems pointless to do so so we're gonna move the queen uh, around uh, and uh, try to just exchange it off um in a lot of circumstances i think that's correct he can't really avoid that there's probably some tactics with knight takes here and a rook coming lining up um if i had more time let's just prepare for that as well well this knight it, 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 i can't see how it's going to get there i have to move the king here then i line up into that so i don't think king here knight here knight here has time um i think really the simple idea is yes to go for exchange queens then okay he's allowed it now which square do i go to i think this square is better because otherwise i'd have to catch her with this pawn and that would make this pawn weak i want to keep this pawn here because it keeps my center in in the in the wrong long run very nice so we're just going to go this way um but i've realized now that i've blundered horrendously oh my words again i've done this i did this earlier in a speed run video can't believe what i've just done guys i've actually allowed him to play a very simple tactic this is incredible I, again this is something that um i often do and i think it's one of the biggest mistakes that players do when they get an advantage uh, and i've obviously done this to make the game more exciting you know grandmasters would never do this uh, and i've actually allowed him now to just go knight takes here and if knight takes He's, he, he, I didn't realize my rook was not defended anymore. A little hallucination. So um, now I have to fight again. And, and actually, he's got the advantage now because he's exchange up. So, <laughs> dear, oh dear, Williams. I was stuck in my way of exchanging queens, trying to explain it. I kind of turned off this game. I thought, I'll exchange queens. Okay, it'd be a bit of a long game. But I, I missed some basic tactics. So, completely idiotic of me there. Um, at least it makes the game a little bit more exciting, right? Yes. Okay. So we have put I put myself on the back foot, and I don't think my position is terrible by any means. But first of all, let's get this rook out of the way of this pin. So let's let's move it over here because that was a major problem before. And now what I want to do, I certainly want to get a knight to this square. The only way I can see doing that is like this. Otherwise, I can try to get a knight here. How do I get a knight there? Not easy. I'd have to do this maneuver. If I can get a knight to this square, that imagine that drastically helps me. I get more space. I block up this idea. So I think here, then where I've got to move the king, though. That's not easy to find. Other squares I want to try to get my knights to. This square. So I can try to come here. But rooks work very well on open files. So this is the main priority is to keep this open file as under control as I can so if I start moving these knights I could get in a bit of trouble on this open file so I, I've got to be careful at the moment I've got quite a nice solid formation I mean white should be playing a move like a4 here just blocking up uh, this this rook um, so can I do anything with my pawns I was thinking about c6 and d5 but I was put off a little bit by the idea that he captures and then he has the c file now any threats here let's just try to stay a bit more awake i don't think so at the moment so um let's move my rook here to stop him ever playing a4 because now i have that tied down it can't do any harm and uh, there's no threats from him i can't get my knight to this square easily because he's covering this one so i can't really do much at the moment with these guys so meaning i'm going to try to do as much as i can with my rook which again i can't do a great deal okay so he's maneuvering around he wants to come in here. I don't mind that so much. I will capture and my other knight comes out. Not ideal. Maybe now I should move my knight here. Okay, let's do that. Because again, the dream scenario is to get the knight here. Not easy to do at all. Because as soon as I move my king, he comes in and he exchanges that knight off. But I want to try and get this knight to a better square. It is risky. 
because I had that nice solid formation, but I am also stopping that knight from coming in uh, to this square. But really, again, the main mistake I made, relaxing when I've got a good position and mentally turning off. And so many games uh, have been thrown away from doing this exact, exact same thing. Uh, and this is, you know, you've you got to remember when you're relaxing chess, it's when your opponent is fighting harder because he's on the back foot. So it really is a tough game chess and you can't relax for even a moment, at, you know, any any instant. You've got to keep uh, your focus up there. Okay, now I don't want to take this one. So he's played a good move now. Just uh, obviously we're not going to go for a draw. So I'm going to play this move, which is risky because I'm losing the blockade on this file. I mean, but I'm at least some ideas of trying to come in depending what he does um, with his pieces maybe another idea is I can get the knight to this square that looks like a good idea because again I really want to block up the one open file and I'm thinking if I could get the knight to f3 combined with a pawn on e4 um, that would be a good way to roll okay so he's, he's starting to do something over here but I'm hoping now I can grab here he is opening up more lines from this and Maybe now I should be certainly thinking about bringing my rook around to where the action will be. But at the moment, if you can't see a reason not to take a pawn, you grab a pawn. And obviously if he captures here, I, I will simply come up. I've now got two pawns for the exchange, so we're equal on material. He really, what he, what he should be trying to do is activate these rooks. He should be thinking again like rook here and getting the other one in while my king is a little bit, little bit funny. Uh, so let's have a look. So if he does go, okay, well actually my king, I think is all right here because it defends my knight. It's harder to check my king on this square when you're next to a knight. Um, so this is actually not a bad setup, especially if I can get my other knight here, which keeps everything really glued together. So this is uh, this is an idea. Will that pawn become weak to a rook attack? Okay, so where's he going with this? Whenever your opponent plays a move, have a look what they're trying to do. He's trying to come here and he's trying to come here. So I'm going to use my knight to stop both of those threats. Not a bad move because his rook can also come down to the seventh rank. I might now, if I could get my rook back around like this, the combination of these guys attacking could potentially lead to some checkmating ideas. Of course, if he moves his rook in, I might better grab this pawn. But my rook now should certainly be thinking about getting back around to help. Okay, so now I can grab this pawn. And this is a very interesting move because it stops that one coming in. But I think I'm gonna grab this pawn, not so much to, okay, he has a check. I've gotta bring my king this way in that case, let's do it. Not so much to grab a pawn, but actually to open up my rook to come this way into the game. By getting rid of that pawn, my rook might be able to join in uh, along, along this way. Now he does have one check. I've got to play bravely. King here. He does have another check. My king comes to g3. That might help me. Okay, so now his rook comes across. Again, he's threatening these kind of ideas. So now my knight will come back. And I'm hoping what I've achieved from this is not necessarily just a pawn, but ideas now of combining my two knights and my rook. I knew I had to give up the exchange like that or whatever it was a piece. It was too easy otherwise. You've got to you've got to try to maximize the potential of the YouTube videos, right? You know, you want to get your you want to get your money's worth. You want to know how to fight when you've blundered. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I was meaning to do, right? Yeah, you believe me? Yeah, good, good. I'm glad glad you believe me. Okay, right now, what's his idea? Obviously, he's got a knight check here in this position. So first things first, let's have a look at the checks that I've got. This check. Oh, I like this one. His king only has two squares. If his king comes here, this check, his king comes here, this check, his king comes back. And if he goes here, I go here. Okay, let's start with this one because my pieces are getting near his king without any risk. I'm not actually really calculating too deeply here. I only see that his king's got these two squares and my knight minimum has two squares to attack it on and I bring my knights closer to his king. So again, I'm not calculating deeply. I'm just seeing that this must be intuitionally the right move because my pieces are closing in. So if he goes here, I check and take there. I don't think he's got a great discovered check. So that's clearly good. Now, if he comes here, check, 
here. Is there any way I can mate him there? So then I go check, king here, check, and he has to go king here, and then knight here is, he has to come here. Okay, well this one is, I can go knight here, but it's a bit bit simple again. Uh, is there any anything better? So I can go, I, I wanna see if I can mate him. So knight g3 we know is good, but let's, let's have a look if I can combine a third piece. Well, I kind of got four pieces attacking his lone king, so there must be something there. I've got a lot of time, let's use it. So check, king here. Check, king here. There must be a mate there. Check, king here. And then I can go check and win his rook. Surely there's a mate though, so not a mate here. Check, okay, we've got that one as well, but this check seems so good, king here. Check king here. Is there really not a mate there? Feels like there should be. And the king here. This check and the king comes here, but the king's kind of kind of getting out of dodge a little bit there. So a little bit out of dodge. So maybe you can calculate this quicker than me. Good chance for you. So check here, check here. And we can use the pawn. That's also very tempting check he has to take and then check and I pick that rook up and I'm going to be a piece up there so this check certainly seems like a great way to start must be the first move okay I can't calculate all the way through so what I do I, I know that this one I have one good line where I'm going to be a piece up at the end of it so I might as well get it make it a little bit easier for me to calculate by playing this check first because obviously if I can't envision things ahead we just I've seen one line, for example, here, check, here, check, here, and then knight g3, check. And when his king moves, I take here, and, I win a, and I'm going to win a rook. His knight checks, he only has one knight check here, and my king seems like it can always come this way. It's not, it's not going to get in too much trouble. So I know I can win a rook, but is there a checkmate here? Now check here, and he comes back. So no checkmate there. Feels like there should be something very close to a checkmate, but I can't see it. Can't see it. Okay, so this must be the right move, as we discussed. He has to come to this square, and then do I play e4, or is there something stronger in this position? So here, check, here. Okay, so I know e4 is good, but check here. Is there nothing else in that position? Rook check, he comes here. And I think his king is quite safe there. So this check is the next option. And after taking, maybe I have to go for this 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 idea. Strange, it just feels like there should be a mate. Maybe I'm missing something here. Check here, check here. Nope. Doesn't work. Knight g1, rook takes. No, I can't give up my knight like that. This check here, and there's nothing there. If I check with a knight, he takes with his rook anywhere, and I might as well win a whole rook rather than allow him to do that. So check here, check here. And of course, I have some good moves there, but I think this is the way to play. Okay, we are gonna play this move because I can't see a checkmate. I mean, it's possible that I was missing a checkmate, but I know that this now forces a winning position. Um, and we still might have some checkmate ideas, but this is clearly good. Actually, he does have king here now, and after check, check, my knight is on pre, but the only, the only check he has, okay, maybe he goes here, but it should be good. Okay, so he's run away now. Now, do I check with a knight first? Because I have some problems with this one. I think I should check with a knight, just because this rook always has potential to win that. And if I check and then take this rook, um, there's not so much to worry about. Um, and I should be a safe uh, safe piece up there. So we, we, we will go for this one. Uh, is there any still any checkmate ideas? So, knights are so confusing, right? I can't see them, because this king has lots of squares to run away to. So. 
I, I can't see it. So I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to take here. And he only has a couple of discovered checks. This one, okay. Now I think I'm going to come here because I want this square actually for my king. I still want to try to weave a checkmate net around him. Uh, if he comes here, I will come to e4. If he takes a pawn, I can come in and I can use, I'm trying to use these guys to take away the squares for his king. Okay, now I do have this one. I've noticed there's only one check. It is not, is not helping him because my king uh, is totally safe here with my knight defending it. And um, now again, my king is trying to force his to a tricky situation. I've got this check and then I'm trying to edge him into the corner here. So let's keep, keep trying. Um, okay, now this check, very good move. I'm gonna win a piece minimum. Oh, now, can I relax here? Well, uh, uh, after after that mistake I made earlier, I, I can't relax. But this check seems correct, and I'm just going to take here. Uh, I mean, there are other good moves, but my king is coming nearer to his king, uh, and I win a piece. So this this is all right. Now let's have a look at what. Okay, and he's actually resigned here. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I I really really flaffed up there, didn't I? Uh, allowing that 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 idea from him, but it was you know. It, it was, I think, still uh, quite a useful little video. Uh, obviously, my opponent, not one of the stronger players to play, but he played well, good player. Uh, and, uh, you know, but in the opening, his artificial moves actually threw me. I was like, okay, this guy's quite weak because he's playing these moves which are don't, they're not actually doing anything. They just look dangerous, but they're not dangerous. Um, and they're not, the, you know, the moves I'm talking about, he, he, he's playing without uh, sort of foundation, really. So, for example, uh, this move particularly you know you can't attack from a position of weakness you can only attack from a position of strength so you can't always attack in chess you need to build up first and, and that is something that I think was key